I'm Emily Wright, Features Editor of Building Magazine, and I'm joined today by David Tonkin, who's the UK Chief Executive of Atkins, which is the UK's biggest design and engineering consultancy, with a track record of delivering huge schemes for government and the public sector. From the Olympics through to Crosswell, he's the perfect person to talk to ahead of the Government Construction Summit. I'm really keen to hear everything that he has to say about building a long-lasting relationship with government in a very challenging time. So, David, thanks very much for joining us. To start off, I just want to find out a little bit more about what Atkins actually does with government in terms of the big projects you're working on at the moment and how you've developed that close relationship and have made it work, particularly in the current economy. Okay. Um, Atkins' involvement with government projects spans many years. Um, there's lots of iconic projects we've been involved in and quite relevantly and quite recently, clearly all the regeneration work around the Olympic site is a, a very key one. Uh, working in conjunction with Arup on the Crossrail project, um, working on the M25 as part of the concession there. There are many different projects that Atkins has done with uh, our government clients. Um, and equally we've been working hard with um, Francis Maud and the Cabinet Office, being one of the suppliers that were selected as a strategic partnership as they started to look at the cost base and government acting as a more intelligent buyer um, with those major companies. So we've had a long involvement um, with government projects and we're really quite excited by the shift that we're seeing and the thought process that's coming out in the Government Construction uh, Summit uh, and the Government Construction uh, Strategy that's being um, put forward at the moment. We think this shows a real opportunity to actually work in conjunction, taking out costs from the industry and actually more importantly also taking carbon out of the construction cycle. How important do you think it is that we have a setup whereby industry can come to one place and talk to ministers, meet government, talk about the issues that they really want to get off their chests and hear what, they, hear what government has to say and vice versa? Uh, I think the forum uh, and the construction summit is incredibly important. Uh, this is an excellent opportunity for the industry um, to hear what are the latest thinking on uh, that's coming out of the various working parties, um, the government construction strategy. Uh, I think it's an interesting opportunity for companies to have a chance to input into that and to have a dialogue and have a forum to discuss where the industry is going and how it can work with government to actually improve the cost base and improve the carbon efficiency of the industry. And why do you think suppliers should attend the event? Uh, I think it's an excellent opportunity for the suppliers to understand the current thinking. There's been a huge amount of work between government and industry representatives building the thought process and this will be a wonderful idea, an opportunity to get a snapshot of where that latest thinking is, uh, to be able to engage in that thinking, to ask questions and hopefully input into it. So this is a wonderful opportunity to look at probably 18 months of work that's been going on to actually get a quick snapshot of it and get an understanding of where the government construction strategy is going and where the supply base can play an active part in that. So this is kind of a one-off opportunity for industry and government to get together in one place at one time. What would your message be on how people and companies um, can make the most of this? First of all, your message to industry and second, your message to government. So on the day, to make the most of the event, I would say that the supply base should listen intently, yeah, should engage, should understand the changes that have been proposed, um, look very hard at how they work in a collaborative way across the industry, in a collaborative way with the clients, look very hard how they embrace some of the concepts around building information management. Um, all those will help us unlock some of the inefficiencies that sit in the industry at the moment. From the government or client side, I think it's about listening to the supply side, understanding what are the barriers, look very carefully at managing the demand cycle so we have uh, stable demand cycles through the industry, uh, look very hard at what they actually require from the infrastructure project, being clear about what they require at the tail end of that project delivery. Uh, and engage with the supply base to unlock some of the innovation that sits there. Because there's some wonderful ideas out there that are just waiting to get into some of these projects. Understand what the barriers are that are stopping suppliers delivering that. Obviously it's an interesting time economically at the moment. Um, what would you say are the three key challenges facing government at the moment and what impact is that having on construction? I think the uh, interesting challenges government faces, they thoroughly understand the importance of infrastructure as a key driver of GDP. 
um, either directly or indirectly in terms of providing the right environment for companies in the UK to operate. Um, equally, we understand the issues around value for money and hence all the working parties looking at how can you take out 15 to 20% from the cost base. So understanding those factors, uh, understanding that while fiscal policy is still tight, monetary cuts are still there, how do they balance that with the desperate need to make sure we still invest in infrastructure? Um, and I think this conference provides a good opportunity for understanding how you both achieve value for money and how you make sure there's a regular supply of work coming into the industry that helps support uh, the GDP of the UK. What trends are you noticing and picking up on at the moment in the industry, both current trends and do you have any predictions for future trends that you're noticing on the horizon? Within the UK at the moment, um, despite the backdrop of some of the economic data that's only just come out, uh, we see actually the market picking up slightly uh, and certainly for the last quarter. Um, we've been expanding our workforce and we have a very large recruitment drive going on at the moment. So we see a slightly better trend ahead of us. Um, I'm quite encouraged that in some of the moves that are now happening, perhaps the dominance of the procurement thought process through um, uh, the construction industry is starting to understand that actually, especially in the design field, um, that design is not a commodity product. It's incredibly important. It's six to seven percent of the construction build. And if you get the design right, you get the end build cost right. So that trend away from a very aggressive procurement style, moving into a more collaborative style, is something that I encourage and welcome the government clients to be doing. So earlier we spoke quite specifically about what your message would be to both government and industry about how to make the most of this day, of this government construction summit. But what would your overarching message be, talking to everybody collectively, what do you have to say at the moment in terms of the industry and where it's going from here? It's just one day. It's a fascinating day. There's some great speakers at the conference. It's a great opportunity for industry and government to engage. It's a great opportunity for those that are not quite up to speed with what's been happening to get in one day a very quick condensed version of what's been happening over the last 18 months from some of the key leading um, lights, both on the government side and also on the industry side. Um, so a day well invested and it's always good to network.